Hello everyone, myself Shornendu De. In this video, we will understand what are the components available in Azure Synapse Analytics and how these components enable us to perform data integration, data arousing and the big data analytics in the Azure Synapse Analytics. Let's start. As part of the Synapse workspace, we will be discussing three important components, SQL pool as data arouse, three analytical runtimes and pipeline for the data integration. In our previous video, we have created Synapse workspace. Before continuing this video, please check that video. Link is given in the description. Now let us open the Synapse Studio. We can open the Synapse Studio in two ways. We can either click this link, Workspace Web URL. We can click this link or we can click this option, Open Synapse Studio for opening the Synapse Studio. Now let us click this open option to open the studio. Now we are in the Synapse Studio. Here there are several tabs. By default, we are in the Home tab. So in the home tab, we have few quick links. These are the quick links to create the script or the notebook or the data flow. We will be creating this component within few seconds. Apart from the home tab, we have data tab, develop tab, integrate tab, monitor tab and the manage tab. First let us see what are the default components were created as part of the Synapse workspace creation. For that let us go to the manage tab. In the manage tab, under the external connection there is a link service. In the link service, there are two link service already created. One is for the data lake gen2 that we have provided during the workspace creation and another is for the Azure Synapse Analytics that is the dedicated SQL endpoint. Now let us see SQL pools under the analytical pools. So here under the SQL pool, serverless SQL pool is already created. So this serverless SQL pool is immediately available after the workspace creation and this serverless SQL pool name is built-in and this is auto scalable. Now let us discuss about the data warehousing option of the Synapse workspace. Before that let us know the consumption model. Synapse SQL provides us the two consumption model. One is dedicated, another is the serverless. This serverless pool is used for the serverless consumption model and it can be used for the unplanned and the ad hoc activities. For the dedicated consumption model we have to create the dedicated SQL pool and this dedicated SQL pool is used for the plan, predictable performance and the cost. In a workspace, we have only one serverless SQL pool that is built in. But we can create many dedicated SQL pool. To create the dedicated SQL pool, we have to click this link, plus new icon, plus new. Let us click it. So this is the interface to create the dedicated SQL pool. This is nothing but the data warehouse of the Synas workspace. So first we have to give the SQL pool name. Next we have to provide performance level. Here we can see. Minimum performance level we can provide that is 100 data warehousing unit. This is Indian currency. This provide cost per hour for this performance level. More performance level we increase for the dedicated SQL pool, more data it can process in a certain time. Accordingly, the cost per hour also will increase. So this dedicated SQL pool is good fit for the predictable performance and the cost because we can provide the required performance level that is the compute power and we know what will be the estimated cost. For this dedicated SQL pool, the compute power is reserved that is dedicated. Whether you use the compute power or not, you have to pay the price based on this estimated cost per hour. So this dedicated SQL pool is the data warehousing option of the Synapse workspace where we can load the transform data and that can be used for the BI consumption. Now let us discuss about the analytics portion of the Synapse workspace. As we can see here, under the analytical pools, we have three pools, right? SQL pools, Spark pools and the data explorer pools. So we are already in the SQL pools option. As part of this analytical pools, we can create the dedicated SQL pool using the SQL pool option. So as we know, dedicated SQL pool is the data warehouse option of the Synapse workspace. This is also works as the analytical SQL engine. We can run analytics on the stored data within this dedicated SQL pool by using this dedicated SQL pool engine. For example, we can perform ELT, extract, load and transform. First, we can load the data into the dedicated SQL pool. Next, we can run the analytics on the stored data within the dedicated pool by using the dedicated SQL pool engine. So we can use dedicated SQL pool in two ways. One is for the data warehousing option, another is for the performing analytics. So we can explore, transform, prepare the data and run the analytics on both dedicated and the serverless SQL pool by running the SQL script. 
in the develop tab we will be showing how we can run the script using this SQL pool engine. So Synapse SQL engine is one of the analytical engine in the Synapse workspace. Now let us go to the Apache Spark tool. Here we can create the Apache Spark tool by clicking this new option. So this is nothing but the Spark cluster. So to create the Apache Spark pool, we have to first give the pool name here. Next, we have to select the node size family. By default, this memory optimized is selected. After that, we have to select the node size. Node size is nothing but the configuration of the node of that cluster. If we increase node size from small to medium to large, then the cluster will be more powerful. Then the cluster will be able to process the data faster on a certain data. Here it is giving the auto scale option. We can enable it or the disable it. So this estimated prices depend on the node size family, node size and the number of nodes in the auto scale. Once we create this Spark cluster, it will be available for the notebook execution. Now let us go to the other analytical engine. So here under this analytical pools, we have the data explorer pool. This data explorer pools is used to run the analytics on a large volume of logs and the time series data from the streaming sources. So we can create this pool by using this interface. Here we have to provide the pool name, we have to provide the compute size, whether it is storage optimized or the compute optimized. Next we have to provide the size. So by using this we can create the data explorer pool engine. So these are the three analytics engine in the Synap workspace. So we have the data warehouse, we have the three different engine. Now let us see how we can use this. For that, let us first go to the data tab. Next we will come to the develop tab and at last we will come to the integrate tab. So in the data tab, this data tab contains the connection to the data source, whether this is external or the internal. Here we can see two options. One is workspace, another is the linked. In the linked you can see, by default this is connected with the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen2. And this is the Gen2 account we have provided during the Synapse workspace creation. So by default, this workspace is connected to this Data Lake Gen2 account. And this is the file name system. This is the container of the Gen2 account. So from the Synapse workspace, we can directly upload the data in the container. We have the upload option here. Here, if we hover the mouse on the plus icon, it is showing to add the new resource. Let us click it. Here we can see two options. One is workspace and that is the link. Under the workspace, we can add the SQL database and under the link, we can connect to the external data. So this data link Gen2 account is the external data that is created by default. This link connection is created by default. Under the linked option, we can use connect to external data to create the connection to the external data source. We can create the linked connection using this option. This will provide connection to the blob storage, Cosmos DB or the data link Gen2. This option provides us to create link service for the external data storage. Under this linked option, we can use integration data set to create the data set of the source and the destination. Integration data set is a reference to a data set specifying the location and the structure of the data within the data store. And this option can be those data store. So by using this connect to external data, we can create the link service. By using the integration data set, we can create the data set. Now under the workspace, if we select the SQL database, it will ask us to create the database under serverless pool or the dedicated pool. Here we can create the database under the serverless pool, but if we select the dedicated option, it will ask us to create the dedicated pool first. So these are the two consumption model of the Synapse SQL. Once we create the SQL database under this both pool type, those will be showing under the workspace option. Here both dedicated SQL pool and the Apache Spark cluster will be shown under the workspace option. So this data tab used to link to the external data storage and it also used to link to the internal SQL endpoint. Now let us go to the develop tab. What we can develop using this in our workspace. Here in the plus icon, it is asking to add the new resource type. Now let us click it. Now let us click the SQL script. Here in the SQL script, we can write the SQL script and run using this built-in serverless SQL pool or the dedicated SQL pool. If we create the dedicated SQL pool, those pool will be displayed here. So we can explore, transform, prepare the data and run the analytics by using the SQL script on the serverless SQL pool or the dedicated SQL pool. Now let us see what we can do here. We can also create the notebook here, right? We can write the notebook using this different language. 
pi square, scala, dotnet c sharp, spark sql and the r. And we can run this notebook by attaching it to the spark pool. If we create any spark pool, it will be displayed here. So to run the notebook written in this language, we have to select the spark pool here. Here in the notebook, one option we are getting to add this notebook to the pipeline. So using pipeline, we can also run this notebook. Now let us select the data flow option. Here data flow is used to the transform the data. We have to add source here. If we select the add source, under the source setting, we can see the integration data set. Let us click the new option to create the integration data set. So these are the data store against which we can create the integration data set. So to perform the transformation, we can select different transformation listed here. So we can perform series of transformation on those integration data set. Now let us go to the next option, Apache Spark job definition. So to run this job, we need the Apache Spark cluster. And we can also use the pipeline to run this job. Now let us see this option, KQL option, Custo Query Language. We can use KQL script, Custo Query Language to run the analytics on log and time series streaming data using the Data Explorer Runtime's analytical engine. So in the develop tab, we have various options to perform development within the Synapse workspace. We can use the SQL script, we can use the KQL script, we can use notebook, data flow and the spark job definition. So there are various options to perform development within the Synapse workspace. Now let us see how we can run this script and the notebook. So to automate the run of this script, we have to create the pipeline. So to create the pipeline, let us go to the integrate tab. Here we can see the pipeline option. Now let us create the pipeline. This is our pipeline. Here in the pipeline, we can see the several activity we can run within the pipeline. So this is the Synapse notebook. Let us drag and drop it. See under the notebook in the settings section, we can select the notebook one that we created in the develop tab. This is notebook one. See this notebook one we have created in the develop tab, this one. So we can run that notebook using the pipeline. Let us delete it. So let us drop the spark job definition. So under the setting section, we can select the spark job definition one that we built in the develop section. So by using this pipeline, we can run the spark job definition or we can also debug the pipeline, right? So whether it is notebook or the spark job definition or the data flow, we can debug the pipeline or run the pipeline. In the move and transformation section, we can see the copy data. This copy data activity can be used to copy the data from source to scene, source to destination. And there is the data flow, right? So let us delete it. Let us select the data flow. So in the data flow, under the setting section, we can select the data flow, data flow one that we created in the develop tab. Let us select it. So we can run the data flow using this Azure integration runtime, using this Spark cluster. This data flow activity will be run by this pipeline. So here we saw we can run the notebook, we can run the data flow, we can run the store procedure activity, we can run the Spark job using the pipeline, right? So here we can debug the pipeline or we can run the trigger. So to run the pipeline using trigger, in the add trigger section, we can either click the trigger no option, it will run now, or we can add the new trigger or edit the existing trigger. We can directly add from here also by clicking this new option. We can also create the trigger in the manage tab. In the manage tab, you can see under the integration section, we have the triggers. Here also we can add the trigger in the create trigger, same interface we are getting. So this trigger can be schedule type, tumbling window type, storage event and the custom event. So this is how we can create the trigger to run the pipeline. Once we debug or run the pipeline, we can monitor the pipeline in the monitor section. In the integration tab, we can monitor the pipeline runs, whether it is successful or the failure. Here you can see, in the pipeline runs, we can see the trigger or the debug. So this is the monitor tab using which we can monitor everything from SQL pool to Spark pool to SQL request, KQL request. We can also monitor the pipeline run and the trigger runs. So till now we saw how we can use pipeline to perform all the activities from copy activity, data flow activity, notebook activity, spark job activity, everything. Pipeline can use the copy activity to ingest data from source to destination. So this pipeline is used for the data integration purpose as part of the Synapse workspace. In this video, we have saw three important components of the Synapse workspace. 
dedicated SQL endpoint as the data warehouse, three different analytical runtimes, how we can use it, and the pipeline for the data integration. Hope this video helps you. Thanks for watching.